Hey, what's up? I want to talk about Honda today. I want to talk about my man, E Honda, today. And specifically, I want to talk about why this video that I put out on Twitter yesterday meant a lot to me. It's a video of Nishkin Blanca versus Hameo 100 Khan Honda in SF5. And when I was watching it, I just had these flashbacks. It was like watching Super Turbo, Honda versus Blanca, but in SF5, where obviously there's going to be some differences, but it was super close to what I want it to be. I have always taken the position that I don't want new games to be just like old games. I want new stuff, right? That's definitely what I want. So some of my favorite characters in terms of how they show up in SF5 are like Vega. I love that he's not a charge character, that he has a stance. Like he's a different guy. I love that there are some changes to other characters. And at the same time, I, I like that there are still sort of callbacks. So none of these characters, although they're all, they all have different stuff, none of them are uh, brand new. They all have like important callbacks to things of the past. And I think that's also important. So while I definitely want new stuff, I definitely also want characters who are going to do th that they'll feel like themselves. That's, I think, something important to me. I really liked SF5 Zangief. I still really like SF5 Zangief. He hasn't always been competitive, but I like his design in the sense that he's back to being a grappler first. He doesn't want to combo you. In SF4, he oftentimes would prefer uh, a combo, you know, crouching short, 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 EX hand, whatever, something, something like that. Uh, and then in, in Ultra SF4, he had a little bit more in the way of combos. He was pretty good and fine, and I certainly played him and enjoyed him, but he was, that aspect of it was not what I cared about in the character. And that's part of why I'm fine with Green Hand being gone. In SF5, he's a grappler first. He doesn't want to combo you. In fact, a lot of the times, unless it's just in this season, unless it's a particular combo, he loses pressure afterward, right? Unless it's, this, it's, unless it's the right lariat that hits. He loses pressure. So he doesn't want to combo you. It's the opposite of, like, Mika, who would rather hit you. She does more damage and stun that way. Laura does more damage and stun that way. Like, that's very common in this game. They have better set setups afterward. Geef wants to grab you. And, that, and that, although there's plenty of new stuff in Geef, that is, I like the callback to the to the feeling of the original Zangiefs. Honda is the same way. Honda is so cool so far. I love what he does. I love the new stuff about him. But I also love that so much of him is super turbo Honda. Uh, a little backstory about me. I was a Honda main in super turbo. Now, originally, I was a Zangief main. I mean, originally, originally, I was a Vega main. I played that character for a little while, and then I moved on uh, to Geef. And not too long after that, in the grand scheme of things, I had moved on to Honda. I mean, I probably mained Geef for, I don't know, three, four, five years, something like that. I mean, in the context of like the period of time that I've been playing fighting games, not that long. And by the mid to late 2000s, the aughts, I considered myself a Honda main. When HD Remix came out, I definitely considered myself a Honda main. Uh, I hated what they did to Zangief in that game, although he got better. He got better in a way that I felt was so gimmicky and dumb, and I hated it. Uh, he was a good character, but I just hated how he turned out. And Honda got some buffs, whatever. They just... I, you know, James and I have ranted about this plenty of times, but not the best design game, unfortunately. So I hated Geef in that game so much that I quit Geef in SF2. I quit Geef in Hyper Fighting. I quit Geef in Super Turbo because his association with HD Remix Geef like had such a bad taste in my mouth that I just quit the character entirely in that whole series. Man. So after that point, I was really just a Honda main. I played new Honda and I played old Honda. There's two versions of each character uh, in Super Turbo. There's the new Super Turbo version. And then there's the old one, which is like kind of based on Super Street Fighter 2. 
Um, there are a little bit differences, but you know, more or less, that's that's the case. So I played the two different versions of Honda. I then picked up Dictator because I was like, well, I miss having two different characters, so I played Dictator, even though he doesn't really cover Honda's bad matchups. I just was like, oh, this is fun. So I only now play Geef in that game occasionally. I'm not a Geef main in Super Turbo. I'm a Honda main. In SF4, I thought about playing Honda, but I, you know, we were wrong, but at the beginning, we all thought Honda was terrible. We thought he was garbage. We thought you shouldn't play him. Um, again, I think we were wrong about that, but that was the initial impression for sure. Whereas the initial impression of Geef was, wow, this character is ridiculous. Uh, I think we were wrong about that too. <laughs> I, although he was good, he was never bad, but uh, we were we wasn't as top tier as we originally thought. In any case, that's why I picked the Geef because I was like, look, I'm trying to win here. I don't want to, Honda's terrible. I'm gonna play Geef. I'll win tournaments, and I did. Uh, and he needed some backups for some bad matches like Sagat. Honda wasn't going to cut that one. So I played Dalsum instead. So I was a Zangief Dalsum player in SF4. Then I quit playing competitively, you know the story. So in SF4, definitely I was a Zangief main, but it wasn't because I cared about Geef as Geef no, necessarily. It was more like, well, I want a grappler. Which one's the good one? It's, Ga it's Geef. Okay. In SF5, I picked Geef again. It was the same idea. Which of these is the grappler? I didn't think Laura was the grappler because, again, she wants to hit you. She does more damage and stun and has better setups that way. Mika's the same way. She she wants to, to hit you. She She's about the combos. She she has command grab only as a way to make you try to like escape her combos, right? Alex is the same way. Zangief was the one who was the grappler. So I picked Geef. I don't, I don't feel that I'm like beholden to Zangief the character. I just want to play a grappler and what I really want to do is play a control defensive grappler. That is my ideal archetype in fighting games. And that shows up very rarely. There is Honda in Super Turbo. There is Q in Third Strike, who's a pile of garbage. There is... I know there's a couple. There's Conra in Killer Instinct. There's Chrome Dome in uh, TMNT. It's not a common archetype. I thought when Abigail came out that he was that, although I think that's probably not true, but that was what my initial impression of him. I love that archetype, and I'm so happy because I think that SF5 Honda is that archetype again. He is a patient control grappler. What I'm going to do today is play a match from Super Turbo. It's just a random one that I picked. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a video from Fight Mania, uh, Arturo streamed. Um, just a couple players, you know, they're just they're just playing the the matchup, uh, real decoy Blanca and Arcadium Honda. Um, I just had I just picked it, whatever. Uh, another match that I tried to pick, um, the video would kept getting corrupted, so I decided not to show that one. And I want to show the parallels between that match in ST and the match that I will then play in Street Fighter Five, which, like I said, is Nishikim Blanca versus Hameo Hundred Khan Honda. That uh, was just a random ranked match that they played that I really enjoyed. I thought it was super fun. In ST, this is a patient matchup. It's probably a slight advantage for Honda, but not by a super ton. It's a match where Honda and Blanca can both play defense against each other. And they can't play the best offense against each other. So who gets the hit first is like the huge part of it. The initial hit is a huge... It's it's like it's like in uh, NRS games when first hit would give you a bar meter. Like it's, it's super important. Because then the whole rest of the round is dictated by that. Whoever has the life lead. Whoever has the life lead gets to run away. They get to play defense. Whoever does not has to get in. Uh, very interesting match. And like I'll show you, I think that SF5 plays out kind of the same way. Even though they're both quite different characters. Even though they both have quite different options. What up, y'all? Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> are you in a time zone where drinking vodka makes sense? Or is this a are you on a, is this a joke account? I like I appreciate it. Thanks. Alright, alright, alright. Let's let's watch this. Uh like I said, this is gonna be Arturo and I I think Killer Miller is also commentating. All right. All right, we're in there. Let me know if the sound is too loud or too quiet or whatever.
So it's just an online match. I like vodka. I, I drink vodka neat sometimes. They're both. On the rocks, that kind of thing. Okay. More, more of a tequila and gin my, my, uh, I had myself. Seconds. I know you. I know you. All right, all right. So know you. listen to what Tanya's saying. Okay, he's gonna do a lot of. Oh no! Don't get hasty. Seconds. I know you. I know you. Just be lame. Butt to the floor. Right. So floor. hang out. Like I said, whoever gets the first hit has a huge advantage. And they know this, so they're gonna try to get it in a cheeky way. And even Chip is 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 the life lead, so that's how you play this matchup. You play it kind of slowly and lame. Do you see what I'm talking about here? Honda went in for the headbutt. He's got a life lead. He went in for the headbutt. What happened? He lost the life lead. That's this matchup. This matchup is don't go in unless you need to, and don't go in in a way that takes risk. There are some ways to approach that are a little less risky. Nothing's without risk, but a little less risky. So hang out, play the lame game. If you don't, you're gonna lose. There we go. So Arcadium Honda now has the life lead. He can just hang. There's like nothing well that was totally by accident for sure. What? He could have just punished and killed. Okay, alright. <laughs> You see, I mean, how real, real decoy is like trying to find some way to move forward and get in, and it's just not working out. So a common thing in this matchup for Blanca to do, I should talk about what their tools are, is to do jump back short. Jump back short has an excellent, excellent hitbox. It's a cross up. It hits below him really well. So it will often, and in front of him even very well, so it will often just beat headbutt. And if you time it such that you hit when Honda does a headbutt and is in his landing frames, then stand, then jump short will cross up or just hit, whatever, whatever side. And then you link it into stand strong, you link it into crouching medium or stand roundhouse or whatever, and you can get a stun. You can just kill like super, super fast. So that's, it's silly for Honda to approach in that situation. But if Honda is down in life and he has to approach, then that kind of thing can come up. This is why the initial hit matters so much in this matchup. For Honda, his defense is more about um, headbutt anti-air. It's more about trying to uh, sort of preemptively take up space. Um, he can do Ochio command grab as a reaction to Blanca trying to pressure very safely. He can just negative, negative edge it. They both have these good defensive tools for sure. At the same time, Blanca has all these cross-ups that can blow up Honda's um, uh, headbutt, right? So, so if Honda wants to react to something with with headbutt, uh, if he gets crossed up on, that's no longer an option for a little while. I don't know. How he did jump jab. If that had been jump short, for sure it would have answered. Right? Oh, you're dead if you get hit. Right? <laughs> you died instantly. People, people talk about how in SF5, you can die too fast and how it's, oh man, don't get hit twice by a V-Trigger or whatever. This is just the game where, how many, he got hit twice, I think? Okay, all right, so a little bit more than that. Uh, but still, it was a, it was two tricky cross-ups basically, right? That was it, and an overhead even with the, with the strong. Ooh, ooh. Oh, this is on top. Oh, don't get hit! Roundhouse. What was that? What? What are you doing with this up ball? Yeah, Blanca can just hang. See what I'm talking about? Blanca can just hang out. The only time you'll see him, well, if he plays this well, the only time you'll see him go in is if Honda has moved forward and thereby given up his charge. That's it, buddy. Oh, oh, he could lose, actually. Oh, I can't believe he did the ball. I wouldn't have done that ball. <laughs> wow. But uh, but there you go. That's that. This is an excellent showing of the matchup. It's it's patient. It's slow. You go in only if you are being a wild man. I know it's not in your. 
uh, or if you need to, if you're down in life. And that initial hit is huge. The initial hit, not even just initial hit, the initial chip damage dictates who has to move. Uh, yeah, lightning beat headbutt. Tisk tisk. You see, he just blew up the charge a couple of times. Honda has butt slam. There you go. And and butt slam is pretty good. Oh boy, Deco is jumping all over him right now. This is this is Arcadium's bad. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear Killer Miller telling him to just sit still. Which is correct, which is the good advice. Oh, he died. Oh, dude, if that had been something else, he would have died for sure. <laughs> this is the problem if you don't just hang out in this matchup. If you play this matchup too actively as Honda, well, either as, as either character, really, then you're liable to just die. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, because he ate a super randomly. Blanca looks nutty in this game? Well, you're right. <laughs> you're definitely right. Blanca is not like a great character in this game. He's low tier. It's not the worst, but he's low tier. But yeah, he's a nut. That's fair to say. He has more mobility than anybody else in the game with hop. Uh, back hop, um, ball as a way to approach. He just has, he has all these funky tools. And he's a grappler. I mean, he, his grab cannot be teched. Uh, it's a bite, which uh, in this game is not dealt with the same. Did he play Ryu? All right, I don't care about the rest of them. What do we got? All right, that's it. Um... The point of the, of showing this was just to think about how the matchup went. It was patient if it was being played well. And if it wasn't, then you died. And even still, even though, yes, patience is the name of the game, even still, they both have the ability to kill each other very fast. Uh, Blanca with just literally... Jump short, stand strong, stand roundhouse, can stun. Random, it's random in ST. <laughs> stun is random within Windows. Uh, so it can stun, sometimes it does. But uh, even if you don't get that, you could still do, you know, jump short, stand strong, um, hop to the other side, bite. Like that's 50% of your life gone, whatever it is. Like it's, you die very fast. And Honda does the same stuff. If, if Honda gets uh, the kind of pressure that he wants, He's going to be able to kill in 10 seconds. I mean, both of these characters do that. Oh, well, that's ST for you. I mean, everybody does that in ST. It's just a, it's a very fast game. So this matchup in particular is interesting because it has that speed. And it also, for the most part, should be played slowly. There's both sides. Which I think is pretty cool. The cross-up super. Uh, the super, I don't think, was a cross-up. I think what happened there was that... Let me see if I can find this moment. I think what happened there is that he was doing a headbutt, and so the invincibility frames went through the beginning of the super. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, he was. You could see him start up with the headbutt. So headbutt is is initially invincible, but the super just like went bypass it. So then he got hit once the invincibility frames ran out. Honda Blanc is, is I, I would say it's pretty even. I do think that, that Honda has a slight advantage, but it's within the context of ST where there are legit like one nine two eight matches. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty even-ish. Blanca can definitely make it happen. Yeah. They look goofy? Well, that's super turbo for you. So let's check out the other one that I wanted to talk about today. Speaking of goofy, <laughs> uh, with this excellent Blanca champ outfit uh i was watching i don't know it might have been this video actually yesterday and my wife walked by and she doesn't know from video games very much and she was like what is on the screen <laughs> what is that thing that's you're watching right now and i was like oh the character's wa wa you know wearing a plushy outfit of himself and she was like that's the dumbest thing i've ever seen i think it's hilarious i think it's great so this is nishkin blanca versus hamea 100 khan a honda player 
Uh, like I said, this is just a random match. I happen to find this on the internet. I happen to find this on YouTube, to be specific. There's a set of people who upload SF5 videos that I watch, who I subscribe to. Let me get which one this was from. This is from Carozo, K-A-R-O-Z-Z-O. I recommend a subscription over there. There's a lot of great ranked matches. Now, th these are not matches that the players uh, you know, expect to go live, right? They're, they're just playing ranked matches online. And, and on CFN, you can just go watch their matches afterward. So, you know, you can't take these matches as being, like, the definitive of anything. Who knows? Maybe they're playing in their boxers, right? Maybe they just had a beer. Like, it's, it could be whatever. Uh, you don't know how the lag is. But nevertheless, you get a good idea, at least, of how the matchup can look. Or it's, it's fun to watch. There's a lot of interesting characters shown in, the, in this kind of thing. Yeah, Warlord, buddy. And, and Nishkin's great. I wish that Nishkin traveled more, but whatever. He's super good. So let's try to pay attention to the similarities in this matchup. If there are any, we'll see. Bam. Oh, you mean he has safe jab headbutt just like before, and now he has the life lead and he immediately jumped back to play defense? Oh, you mean he has safe butt slam and then he immediately jumped back to play defense? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want to. He's hoping. Nishkin is hoping that Hameo Khan, 100 Khan, I'll just call him Hameo, will do something dumb. And there's plenty of time on the clock, so there's no need to worry about time. Um, so he can, he can, he himself, Nishkin can just play this lame game. He doesn't need to go in. He can hang out. This is the matchup. And I'm super happy to see that it has survived. It's a new game. Both these characters are different. I mean, Blanca is very different. He, I mean, same kind of game plan. He's a shenanigansy dude, right? He has he has some solid stuff, but he's he, tricky. He's a weirdo. And uh, so, I mean, the game plan's the same, but the, many of the tools are quite different. Hameo doesn't need to do anything at all. He can literally hang out. You see, I literally mentioned this in the ST matchup. If the opponent, if if Honda is just sitting there, Blanca can't really go in. He may need to. He may need to try. But he can't really expect it to work out. However, if Honda gives up charge, then it's party time. And for how many, this is, we're going, we're going all the way back. All right, so this bit of chip damage just happened at about 95 seconds on the clock. And we'll see what Nishikin does. He hangs up. Building a little bit of meter. Right? Took some gray life, backs up again, building some bar. He has not jumped in. 20 seconds have gone by. He hasn't approached. He he literally waited for almost 30 seconds, 25 seconds, to do anything offensive at all. That is a strain that's put on the Honda player. I mean, it's a strain that's put on both, but it's, as the Honda player, your goal, well, what I would think Hamayo's goal, or certainly my goal would be, is to hang out and wait for the approach because you know that you have the life lead. You have the life lead, entirely from two hits of chip. That's it, you haven't connected with anything. No hits, no combos, no throws. Two times you have chipped, and that means you can hang out. Now it's on you to react to the approach. The approach must come at some point. Blanca doesn't have something to chip from afar, there's no fireballs. He has to make it in at some point. Can you react? Can you react? And t for 25 seconds, you have sat there Trying to react. Okay, in, in any moment he could come. All right, I'm trying. I'm trying to react with whatever crouching jab, fierce headbutt, anti-air, whatever it's going to be. For 25 seconds. And Nishkin, who is one of the best players in the world, I feel, uh, although he doesn't travel very often, um, 
picks exactly the right moment. So now he has the life lead. And now we're down to that 40 seconds later situation that I talked about. And he did not go in again. This is his first true jump in the whole match. And it, it's, you know, 45 seconds in. He didn't do it until he saw Hameo dash forward and give up charge. Yes, the point of the point of this V skill, it's coming. Maybe he already did it. I guess he must have already done it. Let's see, what was it? There it is. Yeah, yeah. the point of that V skill is to move forward without losing charge, for sure, for sure. That's the same way that I use it. I think it's pretty good for that. However, it did mean in this instance that he happened to pick exactly the wrong moment to do that. Now he, you know, neither of these players knew. That the other one would move at that exact moment. This is something that I've I've often thought about, and I don't feel I have a good way to describe it. But there's this there's this moment that often comes up in fighting games where people will will sit still for a long time, and then pick the same moment. Both of both players will just pick the same moment to do whatever it is to press a button, to jump, to anti uh, to try and answer what whatever. Like it it will be the exact moment. Tech throw throw like whatever it is. This is that moment right here of all this time where they have just sat. And then almost simultaneously. It was as close to simultaneous as it could be. I don't know why. I don't know. I, I, there's, we don't have a good term to describe that thing. That, that exact same timing. But there it is. So the intention of the V skill was to move forward. I don't think he needed to. I think he could have hung out. I don't think he needed to move at all. And that's hard to do. You know, it sounds silly to say, but that's hard to do for 40 seconds, 50 seconds. You can do it for 20. You know, there comes a moment where many people crack. And now Nishkin knows that he has the life lead. This is the equivalent of him doing jump back short in the corner. Boy. Oh, he even expected, I think. He just didn't, I don't, know, I don't think he expected that to lose like that. Oh, down strong lost, okay. Butt Slam has a great hitbox. I'll talk about that in a bit. It has some problems of, with low profiling, but uh, great hitbox otherwise. There it is. So this is one counter to Honda. If you think he's gonna do Butt Slam, you can do a low profile move. And for Blanca, that means V-Skill. This little V-Skill, the little, the little Coward Crouch, whatever it's called in this game. That will get under stuff. Other characters have the same kind of thing. Fang can do his, uh, whatever his Coward Crouch is called, I don't remember the name. Uh, some characters can do buttons, some like Crouching Medium Kicks will work, that kind of thing. But that's got to be preemptive. Um, it's very hard to react in time to do that, especially because Blanca can do, or sorry, Honda can do roundhouse version or medium or short, and they all have very different timings. Um, so I, so while that is a counter, I think it's more of a call out than just like a react and do it every time sort of situation. Uh oh. Oh, you died for sure. Oh, <laughs> he just jumped. Sick. And again, that cross-up means that there's not going to be a charge for Honda anymore. There's so many echoes of ST in this match. That was round one. Again, the first hit is super important. Oh my, it's the same phenomenon, and I need some way to describe it. But it just happened to be that Hameo did jab hands exactly when Nishkin did his jump. You know, actually, it may be that Nishkin saw the crouching fierce, and that's why he jumped. I don't know. Wow, that's hard to do to jab it. Sick. That's plus. Ooh, that's. Dude, it's just like how you would escape as Blanca in SC. Oh, it's way too far for sure. Okay. 
Hoping for a crush. Yeah, that that's a great anti right there, Stan Fierce, if you can time it right. Okay. Okay. Wow. So all of this patience. How much damage just got dealt in 20 seconds? Think back to the previous round where, <laughs> I mean, it was a timeout and there was never this much damage done. Okay. So he had about half life at 55 seconds. And even though he's still hitting, he lost, what, a third of his life, Nishkin did, in about 10 seconds. Even though he was still active. This is still a matchup where both characters can definitely just destroy the other. Oh, that could have been V-Trigger canceled for the win, buddy. Ooh, he's trying to hang out for these 28? No, okay, okay. Yeah, quick draw is something that people brought up as a as a potential way to call it. I don't know. You didn't need to. This is just like, just like when Arcadium did stuff in the previous ST match that he didn't need to do, and he got punished. There's no reason. You have the life lead. Nishkin needed to go in. So now it's on Nishkin. Uh, that might have been punishable. I don't know what Blanca does to punish that. But Ford Runas is minus 7. So at maximum range, I don't know if Blanca can punish that. But I don't think that was maximum range. Mm, that's minus two, the fierce one. Seven hits, you know that's minus two. The jab one's plus two, and the strong one is plus one. This is minus two also. That's punishable 100%. 100% right there. So Nishkin has got to work on that. Oh, he may have won? No, not quite. Cool, cool. Let's go back and see when that life lead changed. So, at the beginning, if you recall, Hameo had the life lead, but went in with the butt slam that he didn't need to. So just an error by Nishkin in terms of placement. And then trying to make things work with the rainbow ball. So, a couple, a couple of errors, I think, is probably what you would chalk this up to. I feel like that's typically how, just like an ST, this matchup plays out. A lot of the times when you make a comeback, you know, you made the right read or whatever, but more importantly, the opponent, the opponent screwed it up. It's like the more important reason to not win a comeback. It's if you just screw up. It's so slow. It's so... It's Oh, this is a terrible idea, but okay. Punishable! Oh my god. Oh, this is definitely punishable, yeah. Mmm. Good reactions. Stan Fierce will only actually cancel. It's The cancelable window on it is only near the beginning. So if you ever see that Honda has hit like here, here-ish, or here, I've got this tiny little StarCraft camera, uh, then he can cancel. But if it's ever lower than that, he cannot cancel it. So that means that it has to do, it has to be pretty close. And it can't be late in its active frames. So now we got the life lead again, Hameo. And he doesn't need to do anything. Wow, he definitely did something. <laughs> oh, jeez. The X butt slam is actually ridiculous. I think it's one of the best moves in the game. Uh, this so okay. People in the chat are talking about quick draw versus stare down. Yeah, quick draw meaning that you you know think back to like the mythic old west in the U.S. where two gunslingers, two cowboys or whatever, would have a stare down or they would have a duel and then you'd have, right, they'd both count down to whatever and then try to quick draw their gun and shoot the other one first. I think I think that makes sense, but it sort of implies that there is a, that there's like a, an absolute timer or maybe like an objective timer, which I don't think is the situation here. I think it's, what the phenomenon I'm talking about is not that there's, 
they're not looking at the clock for anything specific. It's it's that they both just just feel that it's time to move, that it's like time to go. And I don't know wh- I, I don't know why. The the thing that I want specifically to highlight is that I don't know why. That I I whatever term we need to use to describe this needs to get across the fact that the mystery is in why it happens. Right? It's not a countdown. It's not you're not going to to something objective. It's what happened? I I'm, I don't know. I feel like I need to like study it academically. I have no idea. The the stare down is like the thing that leads up to the moment. So so stare down I think is is well placed if it's you know, they're both doing nothing for some significant period of time. Yeah. I think that's accurate. But then when they both feel that it's time to do something, that it's no longer the stare down. Now we move to the next phase and that is the issue. I don't know. But we've all been there, right? If you've played a fighting game, and other games too, you you have these moments where you feel that it's the time to move and do whatever the thing is you want to do. And your opponent has also felt that exact same moment. There's some timing in there that is can be felt by both players. I don't know what it is. But in this kind of a matchup, it's super, super important. That's something that will come up in other matchups less often because other matchups are are more clearly defined. By what what I mean by that is that say that you are you know say it's like a, a classic grappler versus zoner matchup, classic Zangief versus Dalsum, whatever. This is this is a matchup between two very obvious archetypes. Geef definitely needs to get in. That's his only way to win. Dalsum definitely needs to keep Geef out. That's his only way to win. And so you know the whole time what you should be doing. And while the timings and individual button choices are going to vary naturally, the strategy never changes. If Dalsum ever loses his control of the screen, he's probably lost the round. Or he loses a lot of life, almost for sure. And if Geef never gets in, he probably, well, almost certainly has lost as well. They're very defined. This match is not like that. So in a Zangief versus Dalsum, there are few of these moments where they both do the same thing at the same time because Dalsum wants to react. He wants to, he wants Geef to jump and then he will do down strong or back strong or slide, whatever it is, to anti-air. And it's on Geef, typically, to make the first move. There's a range where maybe Dalsum presses stand strong preemptively or whatever, right? But that's... It's rarely the case that they will both just do a thing. One of them wants to be reactive to the other. This is not that kind of matchup. This is a matchup that's much more ambiguous. It's um, like amorphous. It can change drastically. What do you even want to do? What, is, what does Blanca even want to do in this matchup? Like, what does he want to force Honda to do? The answer to that, I think, is not actually that obvious. It's And same for Honda. It's not actually that obvious what you should be doing here. A lot of the time, you you have to be biding your time. You have to hang out. You you shouldn't be doing anything. That's that's an important part of this match. And so because there's a lot of time that tends to go by where you shouldn't be doing anything, there's a greater likelihood that you're going to get this moment where both players recognize that it's time to move. Right? Because there's a lot more stare downs. There's just more time spent doing that than in many other matchups. And that's part of what I loved about this in Super Turbo, this matchup. You know, I mained Honda, like I was saying. I played Blanca as his fun secondary. He's just a shenanigans, funky character, so he's kind of fun to play. A lot of us had backup Blancas, just as, you know, fun dude. So I played this matchup for both sides in ST, and there's a lot of that. There's a lot of just hanging out. And on both, both players' sides, I've been in a situation where I think, okay, you know what? I'm Honda. I'd like to get more of a life lead. I'm going to do hands, which does great chip and moves Honda forward and is safe on block and even can hit low sometimes for no reason. <laughs> uh, but there is a timing in there where if Blanca feels that you're about to do hands, it's not reactable. If he feels you're about to do hands, and he can do jump forward, short, you know, roundhouse, fierce, whatever the button is, and hit you as your hands are moving forward. You are still busy with hands, so you can't anti-air. And because you move forward, you've like moved into this little window where Blanca can actually hit you. If that happens simultaneously, then Blanca can come out on top of that. 
And I and that's happened a thousand times to me on both sides of the equation. So there's a lot of these little moments. And and in this match in SF5, the matchup in SF5, in this particular video, it happens a lot too because that's how it goes. That is the name of the game in this matchup. Very interesting matchup. I like this. Yeah, that's something that I do as well. Uh, I tend to I tend to prioritize doing early fierce headbutt. I've been talking about how I think it's important for Honda to just turtle. He's got the life lead. Um, what I'd like to do here is er, super early fierce headbutt, so that you're on the other side of the screen and Blanca can't punish you. You're just out of there. You didn't get a hit on Blanca, but you don't care about that. You just don't want to be next to Blanca. That's that's the important point. You see how preemptive he had to do that to get under butt slam? This is not something you can do on reaction. Yeah. Actually, did he? He, I guess he did. But if that had not been roundhouse butt slam and that had been medium, I think he would have gotten hit. Ah, uh, the classic building meter. Or feigning to build meter. Kameo, you gotta sit still. I feel like he has he has the life lead, I would say, by a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Oh my god. Because this is actually the same as the thing I was talking about. Where if an ST, if Honda does hands and Blanca does uh, jump short or whatever, at the same moment, then Blanca will come out on top. Bam. Again, he jumps after Honda loses charge. Ooh, that shouldn't work. Jab should not work there. Oh, yeah. It's been crossing up a lot, so I get it. No, not in this matchup. Oh, yeah, that medium probably would have won. Nice. That was uh, the V trigger attempt, I think, at the end that got grabbed. Yes, yeah, yeah. he just lost it, so that must have been what it was. I think here, Fierce Headbutt's a great answer there. It's, it's actually invulnerable at, against air attacks, so yeah, it's great. Upper body invul versus air attacks. Uh, armor on V Trigger 2 grab for Honda is on frame 4, I think. It's something random. You know what? Let me, let me look it up, because it's... On frame three for V trigger one and four for V trigger two, or the opposite, that it's four and three. I don't remember offhand now. But that's a good question, so I'm gonna check it out here. Okay, so V trigger one has armor at four, okay, at the fourth frame, cool. And for V trigger two, is it three? Is that accurate? Yep, three. From frame 3 to frame 37, by the way. It's a long time. And on V Trigger 1, frame 4 until 2 frames before the attack active frames, because of course you can hold it. So you can hold it up to 50 frames, which means it's from four, frame 4 to potentially frame 48. Dang. Okay, it's pretty long. Anyway, little side jaunt right there. But it's not unthrowable at any point. I mean, V Trigger 1 is unthrowable once he's fully in the sky, but you know what I mean. Not the ring startup. Ooh, dude, none of this needed to happen. Oh, what? He's almost dead? He might actually be dead. Nice. Wow. See how badly that went south? So, my man Hameo had... He had this golden bar almost 20 seconds in. Golden bar. What did he do wrong? Tried to answer. Okay. You know, to be fair, that's pretty tricky. This didn't need to happen. That didn't need to happen. That for sure didn't need to happen. But just like in ST, you know, you can lose pretty fast. 
Oh, I don't know. Nick Bosco, I think V Trigger 1 is pretty good. Oh yeah, that was strong headbutt, so. Unsafe. Yeah, he was pretty fast in ST, I would say. <laughs> pretty fast! No, you can't do it. You can't. Hameo, the more this goes on, this is it's funny because accidentally this is kind of like the ST matchup that we watched. Where Decoy was just playing more, he's playing the matchup a little more strongly. Hameo, just like Arcadium, is doing things that he doesn't need to do. You know, you can you can play this much more slowly, even than he is. And the longer this goes on, the more it's like Nishikin just understands the moments that Hameo likes to pick. Look at that. I mean, that's such a simple thing, but such a demonstration that he has control over the match. All this time where Hameo is trying to walk in, walk in, trying to walk up and do a strong, do a fierce into cancel. He's not close enough for that. Trying to walk up, and then Nishikin jumps. There was definitely charge. It should have been anyway on Hameo's side. But Nishikin just, this is, it's probably over. Probably done. That's, that, that's minus two, the butt slam, so safe on block. Unless it's a cross up when it is, uh, I think, minus four, so punishable. Well, you can't sit still now. I mean, you can, but you can't for the rest of the round. You know what I mean? Like this is this is a situation where Hameo needs to actually move in. Although, if I if I were playing this, if I were in his shoes, what I would do is hang out for the next forty seconds. I don't know because Nishikin has done Ex Rainbow Ball a lot. You know, he's done Ex Rainbow. He's done slides. He's jumped forward. Yeah, I, I would have. I definitely would have done the same of just hanging out. But you know, hopefully, I would have reacted. That's who knows, but that would be that would have been my goal. Woof! Dang. I like that. I like that. I like jumping a lot after doing after blocking a jab headbutt. Jab headbutt is safe. Oh, that's probably it. No? Couldn't he have just done super? Oh, he definitely could have done. Oh, he died. Okay, that's it. Alright, alright. Well, it's, it's funny that both of these matches ended up being, you know, a little bit more active than they probably should have been. Both this one and the ST one that we watched were active. Like, the, you know, the Honda player was doing a lot more than they probably should have. But you could see that the the strategy that you should go with is to hang out. Like, this should be a patient control match. And it's that's the case for both characters. And Nishikin did an excellent job of that, especially as the match went on. Where by the end, he was really just walking back, walking back. He jumped only when he felt that he had enough control to do so. And he's such a good player, he really picked those moments perfectly. Uh, and Hameo did not have an anti-air. Even though he did have charge sometimes uh, that he could have anti-aired with. So for Nishikin, I think this was obviously played very, very well. But for Honda, could have hung out a little bit more. Again, I wanted to show this because I felt when I watched this, when I watched this matchup, the SF5 one, that I was watching ST. This felt like it was old school Honda versus Blanca. And I really think it comes across that way. I think, I think this is such a great showing of how the matchup felt. And I guess we'll continue to feel. I think that's so cool. Because at the same time as these characters have all this new crazy crap, um, they their cores are there. And what's great too is that they've managed to make Honda and Blanca much less um, sort of scattered in matchups. In ST, Blanca basically loses <laughs> to almost everybody. But uh, not to categorically everybody, but to most characters. He dunks Zangief badly. That's probably his best match. But other than that, he's mostly losing, and he gets dunked by a couple of characters for sure. 
Honda is is all over the place, man. Honda destroys some characters with very easy to do stuff, very simple stuff. You can you can destroy even some of the best players of certain characters. Cami, um, I think people, Faye, Faye Long is getting better, but but Faye is, is kind of the same way. There's some matchups where he really blows people up, like Geef. Um, and then there are matches where he himself gets destroyed. He loses really badly to like Ryu and DJ and Ken and basically Shoto characters. Um, characters who have good zoning games, you know. And then there's lots of characters too where he just has weird 50-50 matches. Blanc is an example. I think Honda has a slight advantage, but you know, it's more or less an example. I think um, that uh, Claw, Vega is much the same way. Whoever gets the first hit just has a huge advantage. Uh, boxers, the same kind of thing. Like, there's a lot of weird matches. So, so part of why I really liked Honda in ST was that he had this big breadth of very different styles you had to use. He's not the same kind of character in many matchups. You you are a wall, a defensive wall. In some matchups, you're you have to go in, and others, and in others, you're playing a weird kind of whoever moves first loses kind of situation. Um, I really enjoyed that that the difference that he had available. In this game, he is not as spread around. I would say that his matches feel a little bit more tightly clustered around even-ish. I don't get the feeling that he destroys anybody yet. I also don't feel that he really gets destroyed by anybody. I think he's he's in a much better state. So they managed to make this character, who was so volatile, be a little bit more consistent. I feel that was the same way about, Blanc about Blanca. Blanca doesn't blow anybody up. He doesn't get dunked badly. These are two characters that I think they've done a much better job at designing. And yet, they both have their feel of how they played in ST. They both have the same feeling. That is such a good design job. I'm so happy with it that both of these characters, despite having new tools and differently used tools and yada yada and their matchups aren't as wild, they still feel like themselves. That's very impressive. I, I really, really like it. Now watch CBS2 Blanca versus Honda. Oh my god. <laughs> Not at all the same thing, right? Two two totally different characters. So in CBS2, you don't get the feeling at all that these characters are who they were in ST. They're they're totally different characters. Now they're they're fun, they're great, right? Blanca is one of the best characters in the game. Uh, RC uh, Honda is is good if you have him in a roll groove. He's got he's got good stuff going. Um, RC command grab. So let's say roll cancel command grab. Actually has more invincibility than it has uh, like total frames of the command grab. Like the startup active and whiff frames are actually shorter than the invincibility that you get from RC. It's pretty wild. Uh, and RC hands just like really good moving forward with, while you're invincible for good chip, uh, give good guard crush. They're totally different than in SD. They're not the same dudes. Sagat? Do you think Sagat blows them up? I do not get that feeling so far. Uh, I haven't gotten the feeling that... Yeah, I haven't felt that anybody blows up Honda yet. Now, I haven't been playing against the best players in the world. I've been playing against whoever I run into on ranked. And since Zavov and said, I think SF5's online just sucks. So I never have got have taken the time to get to a good rank. I think I'm still like ultra plat. I don't think I'm diamond yet. So I'm not running into the best players in the world, but I don't feel that that's way that that's uh, terrible. And when I watch other people play it, I don't feel that way at all either. Um, I don't think that it seems bad. Ah, oh, an ST, an ST. Yeah, I do th for sure. So God beats Honda. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Uh, in that matchup, I actually play old Honda rather than new Honda. And the reason is that part of why Sagat beats Honda so badly is actually not just because of the Tiger Shots. Tiger Shot and anti is what you think of, right? It, that's not the only reason. It's also that Sagat's jump roundhouse is really, really good. It, the hitbox on it is unreasonable. It's one of the better jump-ins in the whole game. But in most matchups, it doesn't matter because he's... It just doesn't come up because you're just playing a straight up fireball anti air kind of game. As old Honda, as old uh, Sagat anyway. But against Honda, it does matter because if Honda moves forward, if he gets rid of charge by walking, then 
he doesn't have a great anti-air against that John Brown house. So for Sagat, what you can do is do this super annoying fireball game, yada, yada. Then when Honda tries to walk forward, now you can sort of jump roundhouse and reset the situation because you do jump roundhouse and tiger shot, and that pushes Honda way back again. N New Honda doesn't really have a good way to deal with this, but old Honda has a better way to deal with this. Now, it's not great, but it's better. His hitbox on his crouching strong is actually a better anti-air hitbox. And his stand fierce is always the chop, the choppy chop, which is a great anti-air. Whereas for new Honda, Stand Fierce is usually the little reach out. What, what is Crouching Fierce in this game was Stand Fierce in ST for new Honda. So he only got that chop if the opponent was close, but Sagat's not jumping at a range that's close enough to trigger that Fierce. So old Honda was slightly better in the matchup because he had a better way to deal with the anti-air. He still lost. He still lost, but you know, a little, little, bit, little bit better. Does Hawk beat Honda in ST? Definitely not. No. Ah, thanks, Sam. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if, if it was for a super serious thing, then I wouldn't use this for fighting games because you can't see the uh, super meter on the left side. <laughs> so what I thought about doing actually was, uh, was this. Let me show you it. Dude, this is the minimap instead, but eh, I think that looks kind of janky. <laughs> anyway, that's it, I guess. Man, Honda's so sick. I'm not going to play Geef anymore as my main. You're out, Geef. It's Honda. Honda's my main in SF5 now. It's not the only time Geef has been dethroned, but for a while I was maining G on account of his good Q. And then for a while, I was maining Abigail, because he was really good. Because he was like obviously really good. And for a while, I was playing Dictator pretty seriously, but yeah, I feel like I'm, you know, I moved on, Honda's my man. Yeah. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks a lot for hanging out. I just wanted to explain why I love this character so much. He's super cool. What top players are picking up Honda? I've heard that Storm Kubo is going to play him seriously. If you if you go online to CFN, you can see a ton of matches where he is actually playing Honda. But that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's going to play the character seriously in tournaments. I have heard that he's going to do so, though. I have heard that he's going to do so. And I think he fits really well with the character, so I, I hope that's cool. Oh, dude, McBosco. SF5 is definitely the best that a Street Fighter game has been for, for people who like grapplers. There's no, this is definitely the best for Street Fighter players, for sure. All right, everybody, that's it. I'm going to go do a little bit of work, and like I said, I'm going to probably stream Teppin later to talk about the new cards. I'm going to create a new deck with the new stuff that they came out with. I think there's a lot of really cool things. So thanks a lot for hanging. That's it. Later.